Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your TVC News of July 9th, 2020. Tonight, the wearing of the mask, news from aerial travel, and news from our community. Well, it's official. Since July 7th, wearing a mask is mandatory when visiting indoor public places in Eastern Ontario and Ottawa. The Medical Officer of Health of the Eastern Ontario Health Unit and the Medical Officers of Health of the three other offices in the territory have announced that this obligation is a regional approach. All four officers will invoke a directive under the Provincial Order and Council under the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. This decision is intended to reduce the risk of a second wave. For Dr. Paul Romiliatis, Eastern Ontario Health Unit Medical Officer of Health, wearing a mask in areas where the general public goes adds a safer level of protection against the spread of COVID-19. There is scientific evidence that wearing masks is an effective way to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Masks should cover the nose, mouth and chin. Exceptions will be made for people who are unable to wear a mask because of health problems. Dr. Uh, Dr. Rumiliatsis reminds that it is always important to continue to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and to keep a distance of at least 2 meters from other people. A one-week deferral is provided for the application of the directive until midnight on July 14th and until further notice. Well, bad news for those of you who took the plane recently, according to reports received from health and territorial authorities and public websites. The Government of Canada wants to warn travelers who were on board some recent domestic and international flights that they may have been exposed to COVID-19. Federal authorities say they are assured that these were confirmed cases of COVID-19 on board these domestic flights. We are talking about Air Canada aircraft that flew between June 23rd and July 2nd. Two planes had left Toronto from Montreal and two others flew the opposite route. Those that left Toronto went to Saskatoon and Winnipeg. Other international flights overflew Canadian skies between, between excuse me, June 25th and July 2nd. These included two Air France flights from Paris to Montreal, an Aeromexico flight from Mexico City to Vancouver, a Delta Airlines flight from Detroit to Toronto, and four Air Canada flights to Toronto from Mexico City and Cancun, and on two occasions from Fort Lauderdale. The Canadian government reminds all travelers who have recently returned to Canada to be under mandatory quarantine for 14 days with or without symptoms. Canada and Ontario are investing in roads and bridges in rural community in eastern Ontario. The governments of Canada and Ontario are measuring how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected small rural communities across the province in different ways. Both governments are making strategic investments in infrastructure to meet the unique need of Ontario's rural and northern municipalities and to help them strengthen their local economies. More than $9 million from the federal government and more than $6.5 million will be distributed among five infrastructure projects in eastern Ontario. The, na the nation municipality, the township of North Granville, Cornwall and the United Counties of Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry will be able to upgrade their bridges and improve road safety. Well, as if one disease is spreading through wasn't enough, the coming summer brings with it the return of the mosquitoes and the risk of becoming infected with the West Nile virus. The Eastern Ontario Health Unit invites people to protect themselves and to walk around their property to eliminate all mosquitoes breeding areas. Once again, according to Dr. Paul Rumiliatis, Eastern Ontario Health Unit Medical Officer of Health, experts are concerned about the presence of West Nile virus in our region. People need to be aware of this and take every precaution to protect themselves from mosquito bites while outdoors. While outdoors, the Eastern Ontario Health Unit recommends wearing long clothing when mosquitoes are noticeable outside and considering the use of mosquito, re mosquito repellent. Excuse me. The EOHU also recommends that you monitor and empty areas where standing water is likely to accumulate, which is a prime breeding ground for mosquitoes. The Economic and Tourism Development of the United Counties of Prescott and Russell is seeking the participation of the business community in drafting the Prescott and Russell Economic Response and Recovery Plan. It is through a second survey that the opinions of the region's entrepreneur will be considered to measure the evolution of the situation. 
Carol Leving, Director of Economic Development and Tourism of the United Counties Prescott Russell, explained that she is concerned about the fatigue of the business community towards surveys. Because, she explains, over the past few months, the region's entrepreneurs have often been solicited by several organizations. But, according to Leving, the survey is the most effective way to consult entrepreneurs at the regional level. The survey on the evolution of the impact of COVID-19 on businesses in Prescott and Russell was sent this week to businesses on the DETPR distribution list. Businesses that have not received it can contact the DETPR to obtain one. You have until July 15th to return your responses. Notice of caution, if you receive a call asking you to deposit a large amount of money into a Bitcoin account to support crime prevention programs, you are facing a phone scam. The Ontario Provincial Police are warning people in Eastern Ontario about this type of scam. They point out that one person has already lost several thousand dollars. But thanks to a technology called call spoofing, the scammer is able to program the call display to show a local or familiar number on the victim's phone. And in some cases, the call display of the caller can indicate that the call is coming from the Russell Detachment of the Ontario Provincial Police. The OPP never asks for banking information over the phone, nor does re the Canadian Revenue Agency, and does not solicit donations for crime prevention programs. Several frontline organizations in Eastern Ontario will benefit from an investment of more than $2 million. This was announced by the United Ways of Eastern Ontario. This Canada's Emergency Community Support Fund is a community-based support for charities and not-for-profit organizations that are on the front lines of the pandemic and are serving as lifelines for many vulnerable Canadians. The 18 targeted programs include food and productive equipment needs, multilingual social programs, and also mental health support resources. Every year, Valoris presents awards of excellence at its Employee Recognition Gala. This is an important moment to highlight the exceptional work of employees, but also of certain partners who helped the organization achieve its service mission. This year's winner of the Award of Excellence for the Partner category is the Ministry of the Solicitor General, specifically the probation officers in the Hawkesbury office. They stand out for their availability, quick response, professionalism, dedication, and flexibility. It is a partner with whom Valeris has been working closely for several years. Together, they ensure that people in need of support complete the program that is designed for them. The City of Clans Rockland Fire Department reminds everyone that open fires are prohibited. The complete ban on burning also includes fire that are made in covered outdoor fireplaces. This ban will continue until further notice. And finally, the municipality wishes to remind that the Clarence Rockland City Hall, the Community Halls, the Clarence Rockland and Clarence Creek Arenas, and the Jean-Marc Lalonde Complex remain closed to the public for the moment. Please note that the following municipal buildings remain closed to the public until further notice due to the ongoing pandemic. Religious groups who would like to use a place of worship to practice their faith should contact the City of Clarence Rockland. And finally, the Clarence Rockland YMCA summer camps will begin next Monday, July 13th at the Recreational and Cultural Complex. The camps are different this year and follow the guidelines of the Eastern Ontario Health Unit and the Ontario Ministry of Health. However, the facilities of the complex remain closed to the public. For its part, the public library is still open. Books may be obtained at the door rather than inside. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me for another episode of your TVC News. See something that could make the headlines? Feel free to send us an email at nouvelle at tvc22.ca. Once again, nouvelle at tvc22.ca. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week.